Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Mechanics Brewery. In today's episode, Janus, from Stormcrown Estate Workshop, by Traverser. In Roman mythology, Janus is the god of beginnings, gates, transitions, time, duality, doorways, passages, frames, and endings. Depictions of him usually showed him as having two faces, one in front to look into the future, one behind to look back at the past. You could say that to put it shortly, Janus is the god of boundary. Named after the god, Janus sees no meaning in the value of distance, as all is equal before it. But before that, let's talk about Stormcrown Estate Workshop. Founded by Magnus II, a house of water car Aiken Baron, the Stormcrown Estate is a mech manufacturer specialized in small-sized mechs barely larger than a man. Rather than following the engineering doctrine of mechanized cavalry, the warframes developed by the estate are more like mechanized infantry, made for amplifying the power of an infantry squadron. Small but powerful, the mechs of the Stormcrown are no less flashier than their larger counterparts. Now, let's talk about the core bonuses. Telium alloy lamellar layer, when a strong grip is required. As a free action, your mech can roll a contested agility check against an engaged hostile equal or bigger than you to use them as cover. On a success, you gain hard cover until the start of your next turn. Basically, you won't find yourself out of cover anytime soon. Increased force projection, expands your influence. Basically, all characters within range 2 of you now count as adjacent to you with all that implied. Alpha Strike, I don't need to explain this at all do I? As a full action, you can fire everything at any number of targets. The sheer amount of smoke provides you with soft cover until the start of your next turn, which you will need because you are slowed for the same amount of time. I don't think I'm required to explain the benefit or drawback of this one, anyone who wants it will get it regardless of cost. Drip Feed Cooling System, Cool Down at a Countdown. Your mech now has a Drip Feed Countdown dice at 6. When your mech takes heat, lower it by 1. When the dice reached 1, resets the countdown and cools 6 heat. The dice does not reset between scene but it does upon full repair. It's something to cool your heat at the very least. Roads Frame Configuration Basically you get this rollout protocol that does exactly what you think. In vehicle mode, you cannot climb, pick up item, suplex, but it doubles your mech speed when you boost in a straight line on non-difficult terrain. If you have a flight system, you can fly or swim too, reducing the heat from flight system by 1 to a minimum of 1. You can also fit a single human-sized human inside you in vehicle mode, you can also fit more people if you have any system that can aid you in this department. Those sentences came out so wrong, but if you want to get fast, you can get fast. Interdiction field, makes it harder to get away from you. Enemies that are adjacent to you count as being in difficult terrain. It definitely makes it harder for them to get away from you. Besides the six core bonuses provided by Stormcrown Estate Workshop, you will also find three from GMS that might not be fancy, they still do their jobs pretty well. Frame miniaturization makes your frame smaller by one size to a minimum of half, it also gives you plus one accuracy to agility checks and saves in the process. Mount reconfiguration makes one of your weapon mounts smaller in size instead, but you get plus one accuracy for all weapons within. Advanced Systems Modification just gives you plus 2 system points, and that's pretty good. All in all, a pretty good way to further modify your mech. But let's talk about the actual topic of this episode, Janus. Janus is small with no armor, but it has quite a good health with an adequate amount of repair cap, along with excellent evasion and speed. Its save target is also really good, sensor range isn't as good but still quite nice, and its e-defense is just good. It also has 7, system points and a great amount of heat cap to handle some heat. As for its traits, it has two of them. First, Journeyman, when its ally starts their turn besides Janus, they gain plus 2 speed. Second, Gatekeeper, for once per round, if you or a nearby ally are about to be attacked, you may spend a reaction to move yourself or your ally up to 3 spaces which does not provoke reactions or engagement, getting out of range or into cover in the process. With these two traits, Janus has proven itself to be quite a handyman of battlefield maneuver. For its weapon mounts, it has two, one flex and one main slash auxiliary. And for its core power, Janus can activate displacement harness for guardian of the crossroads. Upon activation as a quick action, all allies can now use their standard move to just teleport right besides Janus. This lasts until the end of the scene. 
In short, with this core power, Janus can bring the whole party to Crash 1. As for the rest of the license, you get Traversal Gear and Mass Turkey subsystem in the first section. Traversal Gear, make a path through enemy line. Upon activating this limited system with a quick action, until the start of your next turn, when you move or boost, you can only move in a straight line, and make a trail that's one space high and as wide as you are. While in this trail, you ignore difficult and dangerous terrain, as well as engagement, and so do your allies when they move on the trail, but only when it's active, which it won't be at the start of your next turn. Use this to make a path through anything and carry your allies along the way. Mass Turkey Subsystem, keep everyone going. When you bolster an ally, you can also remove an immobilized or slowed condition from them as long as it's not self-inflicted. It's a nice tool to have if your allies like moving and not dying, the only drawback is you can't use it on yourself. Aside from Janus frame itself, you get Splitter Rifle and Usher Slash Entourage Array in the second section. Splitter Rifle Two shots in one, decent range, accurate, but low damage. However, you can fire this weapon twice, whether against single target or two. It's a gun that can shoot twice, what's not to like? Usher slash entourage array, never stop moving. Upon expending a limited charge with a full action, you and all nearby allies could move up to your speed without provoking reactions or engagement. Now you can truly, carry your team to the front line. In the final section, you get Scranton Lang Anchor and Terminus Class NHP. Scranton Lang Anchor, bend the boundary to your whim. With a quick action, you can expend a limited charge to deploy the Scranton Lang Anchor to a free space within your sensor range, which arms at the end of your turn. It does not obstruct movement and cannot be attacked until it is armed. When it's armed, you can choose two settings. First, Reality Bubble, create a Burst 2 zone around it which has all characters within being permanently slowed until it is destroyed runs out of juice at the end of your next turn, or they pass a system check at the end of their turn. Nobody can teleport in or out of the zone, and any conditions besides lock on and shredded affecting a character within the zone will have zero effect, as long as it's not self-inflicted or applied by the anchor. Second, Reality Anchor, choose a target within the anchor's sensor range, that target is now jammed and slowed until they pass a system save at the end of their turn. If they are already slowed, they are now immobilized. It also cannot teleport and turn invisible, and any conditions besides lock on and shredded blah 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 it's basically the same. This system has multiple uses, one is to lock down on one or a group of enemies, second is to shield your allies from more conditions, even temporarily. How you use it is up to you. And finally, Terminus Class NHP. Stop! You violated the law! The laws are busy. Your mech now has AI property and gains a new reaction called, End of the Line. For once per round, when someone moves within your sensor range, they must pass a system save or immediately get immobilized until the end of their turn, ending their movement. Any pesky speedy enemy is not going to move anywhere soon with this around. As a conclusion, Janus is a small sized support platform that keeps its allies moving and its enemies not. Its license is full of tools to help exactly in that role, there's really not much to say about it. It does its job well, it's reliable, and it just works. So get one, if you want to carry your team all by yourself.